dwindling reserves of readily accessible fossil fuels, rising energy prices, a threat of global warming. I think I don't really have to tell you why it's important that we look for alternative sustainable energy. The sun is one of the most powerful sources of energy that is completely underutilized when we use it. If in the UK, on a sunny day, we harvest all the sunlight and convert it to electricity for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah, that is about the length of my talk, we would have enough energy or electricity for the whole year, just 10 minutes. Now, believe it or not, the sun doesn't always shine in the UK. So we might have to extend this to one and a half hours, also because we have hills, but still, one and a half hours. One and a half hours enough for electricity for a whole year? That's nothing. If you go to a country with some more sun, and there's many countries with more sun, these values are even more impressive. So, why are we not replacing all our um, power, um, power stations with solar panels? Well, the first of all f is, of course, that f land is a very valuable resource. Yeah? We need it to grow our food. It secures our food supply. We cannot just put solar panels down there. But we don't have to go to all the land. We could put solar panels on our rooftops. Now, if I look at these rooftops and I ask you a question on the right-hand side, who thinks this is a nice site? Who thinks it looks beautiful? One or two? Well, oh, that's very brave. I actually think it looks ugly. Yeah? Uh, I'm Dutch, I love windmills, but I think this looks ugly. <laughs> but if it solves our electricity problems, I think it's acceptable. I think it's perfectly acceptable. And once it's acceptable, when we build new buildings, we can integrate our solar panels in a design, and then it could even become beautiful. Okay. There are, however, a couple of problems. First of all is the price. At the moment it's too expensive, and connected to this is that electricity, uh, the, the conversion from light to electricity is not very efficient. Bigger problems, however, are the following. We need electricity when the sun doesn't shine, at night or whether it's particularly cloudy or stormy. The most important problem is that only a quarter of our energy needs in the UK and most developed countries is electricity. The majority is fuel, fuel to drive our cars, fuel to fly our planes. So this doesn't solve our fuel problems, or can it? We can convert electricity to fuel. We can make hydrogen, for instance. But I'm a biotechnologist, and I find this amazing, because plants have been doing this since the dawn of time. Photosynthesis is exactly that. You harvest light and you convert it into fuel. So in the case of plants, fuel are sugars, ultimately biomass. So why are we not converting biomass into fuels? Well, there we get to our first problems. We need our land to grow food. We cannot, we cannot all use all our land to grow energy. Bigger problems, however, are that we are really bad in converting biomass into readily uh, accessible fuels for our day-to-day -day products. And finally, plants need some of that energy themselves. Yeah, they don't produce everything for us. But as a biotechnologist, this is where I see opportunities. And not just me, but a whole bunch of biotechnology scientists are trying to come up with ways of solving the energy needs for the future. And today, I just want to very briefly illustrate four of them, and one of them might solve some of our problems in the future. The first one on the top left. Can we re-engineer a living organism, be it a plant, a cyanobacteria, or an algae, to create fuels for us, so we don't have to convert biomass into fuels? Can these organisms immediately make bioethanol and, and export it so we can harvest it, or maybe even diesel? Now, if we want to do that, we have to completely re-engineer the genome of that organism. We cannot just change one little gene, or we cannot just breed it in. This is a major step change. This is known as synthetic biology. And synthetic biology doesn't come without its ethical concerns. So I want to again ask the audience to raise your hands if you think synthetic biology 
is potentially dangerous and ethically problematic. So, okay, so we have a, a playing God um, uh, uh, problem here, which is a valid problem. Um, I saw some other hands here. Yeah. So what if an organism we've designed comes into the environment? So uh, I'll, I'll address both. In the first case, does it go into the environment? If we engineer an organism, we can make sure it doesn't come into the environment. Okay? Because if we engineer an organism that makes fuel for us, it would not be competitive in a normal environment, because all this energy goes into the production of fuel. We actually have to very actively stay in our life. And this is important, because it shows, the, uh, it illustrates that if the application is right, the technology itself might not be an ethical problem. The playing God is very valid. That I have no answer to that, and this is comes for some people even down to religion, other people just uh, ethical, philosophical questions. And we scientists need to stay in touch in a two-way dialogue with the public trying to solve these questions. Other applications on the top right is we might be able to convert some of the biomass to readily, uh, readily accessible fuels. And specifically, we could look at waste products of agriculture, like chaff or or um, uh, hay, or things like that, things that are not really all that useful. And that can be done by enzymes. There are enzymes in nature that cleave things like chaff, and they cleave it up and make, for instance, sugars out of it. Now, the problem there is that these enzymes are actually very um, inefficient, and it's really, really hard to get our hands on these enzymes. We have to go through lots of difficult procedures to get tiny milligrams of these enzymes. Biotechnology might be able to improve upon that. And there's many scientists actively trying to make this better. Importantly, if that works, we can combine our energy needs with normal aquaculture, where some of the waste products help to sustain some of our fuel production. Yeah, very, very promising. Both of these, however, are still the idea of exploiting nature. Is that a problem? Is exploiting nature a problem? Well, my, I put it to you, is that that's what we've been doing since society was born. Aquaculture is exactly that. We've been breeding plants, changing the genome, maybe not by genetic manipulation, but by breeding, to do what we want them to do. Okay? They grow faster, they grow bigger. And they don't do it because they want to. They do it because we see that some, some aquaculture products give us more yield, give us more food. And this has been the, corners, uh, the cornerstone of society for thousands of years. And I hope that in the next century, agriculture, together with biotechnology, might help us to make some sustainable energy production. However, there is a, a different thing we can do with nature. We might not need to exploit it. My idea is that we might be able to learn from it. What you need to understand here is that photosynthesis, in the actual what happens on the molecular level, is as soon as a photosynthetic apparatus absorbs light, electrons jump from one side to another side. There's electron movement. Now, that sounds remarkably like electricity. And actually, it's not all that different. On the bottom left, what scientists have done across the world is they have taken the photosynthetic apparatus off plants and have taken it out, isolated it, and put it on electric wires. And you know what? If you shine light on it, we can generate electricity. This is exciting stuff. This really gets me excited. But the problem is, as soon as you take a, a photosynthetic apparatus out of a plant, and you put it on a wire and shine light on it, it tends to die, yeah? maybe in half an hour. So very exciting, but maybe not suitable to solve all our problems. Not a real life product. However, photosynthesis is also remarkable because it's so much more efficient than our solar panels. Yeah, photosynthesis has been shown to be up to 99% efficient, depending on how you classify efficiency. So my idea is, can we learn from nature? Can we try to copy, can we try to biomimic the important aspects of photosynthesis and use so solar light and convert it directly into fuels? The approach we have taken in our lab, together with collaborators in uh, Cambridge and East Anglia, is to take nanoparticles of the same material we use in solar panels. So we take that material, we make nanoparticles on it, and we try to couple that 
to um, to enzymes and proteins that can catalyze reactions that ultimately produce fuel. So can we make hybrids where we use our current bio biotechnology status and advancements and combine it with nanoparticles of solar panels to make fuels right down into our reaction tubes? Now, the thing with science is I cannot promise you that any of these will work, but I'm a strong believer that one of these will work. One of them has to work. Because if one of these works, we'll have a great way forward to make a sustainable future and help our planet to survive. Thank you very much.